Hi everyone and welcome to the ZDHC Gateway Wastewater Module Webinar for suppliers, labs and brands. And I hope you can hear me well. Great. And this is Georgia from ZDHC and today together with the ZDHC and ADEC team, we will be diving into the ZDHC Gateway Wastewater Module details and functionality. And first we would like to thank you for attending this webinar today. And by delivering the session, we aim to help you familiarize first to the gateway system and relevant to you functionalities as brands, suppliers and laboratories. And we also encourage you to ask us your questions by using the Q&A button during the webinar. You can find it either on the top screen or on the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, we won't be able to receive any questions typed in the chat room. So please ask your question only through uh, the Q&A button. Once a question is received, one of our team members uh, will be responding to your questions as soon as possible. And now, let's start with an introduction uh, to the ZDHC's program and wastewater guidelines. And for this, I will hand over to Nani for the introduction. Hey everyone. Thank you, Georgia. So my name is Nani Kusuma. I'm the program manager within the ZDSC. I'm going to spend approximately five minutes to just uh, give you an introduction to the ZDSC program and especially the wastewater guidelines that we have. But first of all, I would like to say thank you to all of you for joining this webinar today. So uh, ZDAC is a, an industry uh, multi-stakeholder uh, organization. Uh, you can see here very clearly that we are consisting of uh, you know, member uh, brands as a members. We also have manufacturing facilities, chemical suppliers, and a couple of other uh, industry associations such as uh, SSC, um, you know, they give uh, UNICH, I mean, you see all of it in, on, on the slide, is really about uh, fostering industry collaboration to transform uh, the, the sector. And especially if we want to move uh, forward, we realize that we need to have this uh, engagement and collaborations with the industry. So we are very grateful. We started with uh, six signatory brands a couple of years ago in 2011. And now we have more than 100 uh, members and contributors of the ZDAC. And uh, we actively engage uh, the representative from all of these companies to further uh, develop our program within the ZDEC. So we believe in holistic approach when it comes to uh, managing the chemical within uh, supply chain. So for that, we uh, develop three main pillars, which is the input, process, and output. From the input perspective, it's really about managing the, the input chemistry. So how can we make sure that the, you know, the chemicals that are used at the manufacturing facilities are conformant to the ZDAC MRSL, the Manufacturing Restricted Substance List. And for that, we have, you can see on the left-hand side, we have uh, a gateway chemical module and uh, basically an online platform where uh, manufacturing facilities could find several alternatives of chemical products that are conformant to the ZDAC MRSL. And uh, from the process perspective, we do have a chemical management uh, system and basically is really about giving a guidance on how to, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, handle chemicals at the facility, you know, how to store the chemicals, how to safely use chemicals, and how to dispose chemicals, for example. And for that, we also have training, capacity building, not only for uh, manufacturing facilities, but also for the brands and other uh, type of uh, uh, supply chain partners. And uh, on the right-hand side, you see the output. So. Uh, managing the input and the process itself, we, we realize that it's not enough. So from the output perspective, we have uh, wastewater guidelines. And we developed these guidelines uh, at the end of 2016. And the intention is not only that we have um, the conventional parameters within the guidelines. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with the wastewater guidelines that we have. So not only that we cover conventional parameters such as 
you know, the COD, the BOD, pH, temperature, etc. We also have the MRSL parameters in the wastewater guidelines. The intention is really to verify whether or not um, the hazardous chemicals are intentionally used in the manufacturing processes. So you can see that <coughs> the whole thing are connected. <coughs> Excuse me. The whole thing are connected, and uh, so we make sure that the input perspective and output control perspective are uh, well managed. And for that, we have uh, an online platform called ZDC Gateway Wastewater Module. And this webinar is really focusing on, you know, giving you um, a practical demo on how to use it, how to take advantage of it, and from the different user perspective, you know, the brands, suppliers, but also laboratories. So I mentioned that the Wastewater Guidelines was uh, launched in November 2016, so it's almost two years ago uh, by now. And of course, we have a plan to update the, the Wastewater Guidelines, <coughs> but uh, it's something that we uh, aim to do next year. And uh, I think some of you also have a questions around, you know, how about leather specific wastewater guidelines? So at the moment we are still piloting it and it's not something that we uh, officially put in the guideline itself. So we will definitely step by step improve uh, the guideline that we have. And it's definitely connected to the MRSL. So when the MRSL is being updated, it means that the wastewater guidelines will also be uh, updated accordingly. So, uh, it is available on the website, publicly available, so it's not only for the ZDC members, but also if you are not a member of the ZDC and you would like to uh, understand the guidelines, you can easily download it uh, from our website. You can also implement the guidelines, you can encourage if you're a manufacturing facility, you can also encourage uh, the, the customer or the brands that you work with to um, accept or to adopt the, the, the ZDC wastewater guidelines so to make sure that we have uh, a harmonized uh, standard or guidelines for wastewater quality in the supply chain. Uh, not only that we harmonize the, you know, the, the, the quality requirements of the wastewater discharge, we also try to harmonize the, the testing and reporting schedule every year. So for that we have uh, two times a year is the cadence two times a year. The first one is at the end of April and the, the second one is at the end of October. And this is why we do this uh, webinar to support uh, the supply chain, especially the, the brand suppliers and the labs, to get familiar with the gateway, to know how to do reporting of the test report uh, on the gateway and what are the, the critical features they need to, to understand and what kind of information they need to submit. And it's very important to note that only ZDSE accepted labs could submit the test report on the gateway on behalf of the supplier and manufacturing facilities. And my colleague, uh, Georgia, will explain later uh, how does it work in practice and when lab submit the test report, what would be the next step you know, in terms of supplier, what kind of action they need to take, and then from the brand perspective, what kind of information they could access. All right, so I think uh, I will hand it over to Georgia to explain more in detail about the gateway itself. Thank you. Perfect, thanks Nani, that was very helpful. And now, uh, after the updates and the introduction to um, the wastewater uh, guidelines, as well as the introduction to ZDHC, it's time to talk more about the gateway system. And here is an update in where we are in terms of engagement to the gateway system. The platform hosts more than 1,700 facility accounts, which account as owners of more than 1,500 wastewater test reports submitted on their behalf by 73 ZDHC accepted labs from 23 locations around the globe. Once accepted, these reports are visible to all 24 ZDHC signatory brands that have an active account on the gateway. I would like to give you a small introduction first to the wastewater module. So the gateway is the environment that currently hosts two modules, the wastewater and the chemical one. And today, we will be focusing on functionalities and visibilities of you as users, as brands, as suppliers, as laboratories, to the wastewater module. But what is this module? 
It is a global online platform for suppliers, facilities, to share verified wastewater test results against the ZEHC wastewater guidelines. It is accessible by brands and suppliers, which are members of the ZEHC community, which means brands and their value chain affiliates, ZEHC brands and their value chain affiliates, as well as ZEHC officially accepted laboratories. A ZEHC accepted lab submits the wastewater test results on behalf of a supplier. Then the supplier needs to review the data and accept or decline it. Once the results are accepted, the test uh, the test results are visible to ZDHC brands as well as in the public disclosure portal. But we will give you more information, in depth information regarding the access rights of the user after the end of the demonstration. So, uh, following that, we're going to have three parts of demonstration with visibilities and functionalities of the user categories, specifically laboratories, then suppliers, and at the end, the brands, on what they can do actually by having access of the wastewater module. And now we will start with the demonstration of the laboratory's functionality. So if you are a laboratory, just pay attention to the following demonstration. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As a laboratory, you have a key role in the ZDHC Gateway wastewater modules. We will show you today how to add, edit, and submit wastewater test report on behalf of the ZDHC Gateway registered suppliers. Once you log in, this is the screen that you will see. In order to upload wastewater test result, you must be officially accepted by the ZDHC Foundation. To upload test data, first, go to water data using the left-hand navigation panel. At the water data test list, click Add New Test at the top right-hand corner of the page. Then select the supplier that will own the report. Once you have selected the supplier with an active reporting fee status, the wastewater detail page will feature the interactive table with which populates suppliers' facilities location, test report, and test results. To identify a supplier, effluent treatment plant and discharge volume. Select supplier by clicking the drop-down menu site suppliers. The address, coordinates, HIC ID and IP ID will be auto-populated. These details are used in the supplier account detail. To identify if a treatment plant is an effluent type, Select the drop down menu beside Effluent Treatment Plant. Then select Yes or No. If you select a Yes, you need to provide your discharge type. There is direct discharge or indirect discharge. Then proceed discharge volume input. You must input the data in a text box. Please note that the unit of measurement is in liter per hour. If you select no, proceed to your discharge volume input. Again, please fill in your text box and the unit of measurement is liter per hour. Now, we'll show you how to navigate your test report. The test report section will display test information such as the sampling point, sample type, and laboratory information, like this on your right hand side. To import test report information, beside the sampling location, select the sampling point by clicking the box next to the appropriate sampling point. For example, incoming water and raw wastewater. 
On the right hand side of the sampling point is the drop down list of sample type. You can choose the sample type by selecting whether it's a composite or simple sample. Next, fill out the necessary laboratory information, such as the name, contact email, and lab report testing reference. All the information market star are mandatory. You can upload the test report by clicking Browse File and select the file from your system. Finally, click Save. The test results section will display a list of chemical substances under the CPHC MRSL parameters and conventional parameters. To input data, to your chemical group, click Chemical Substance Group highlighted in color. A list of chemical analytes under the group will be displayed. You may input your data under an active sample point column. Input numerical or numerical data beside the unit of measurement per chemical, or you may choose not detected or not available if applicable. Once you have created a test report, you may submit the test report to your supply for approval. First, on the wastewater data page, click back to wastewater list. Then click submit in the action column of the water table. Then the report will be sent to the supply account. If you want to edit your existing water data. The ZBHC Gateway Wastewater Module allows its user to edit their water data detail and in time. To edit your existing water data test, first go to the water data page, then click edit under the action column of the water data entry. You will be redirected to the water data detail page where you can make necessary changes. Or you may click directly to the account name of the water entry. You will be directed to the water detail page. However, if you have already published a water data test report, you need to republish it for the supplier to see the updated version. Viewing scorecards. Once the supplier has accepted the test report you submitted, the scorecard button will be displayed under the action column. To view the scorecard, first, Go to the water data page, then click scorecard under the action column of the water data entry. You'll be redirected to the wastewater scorecard page, which will display the facility test result detail and performance summary like this. And now let's proceed to the supplier's functionality demonstration. If you are a supplier, just pay attention to the next demonstration. 
As a supplier, you have a key role in the ZEC Gateway. We will show you today how to manage wastewater test reports as well as how to upload your facilities permits. Let's start with how you can manage the wastewater test report submitted on your behalf by a ZEC accepted laboratory. When you get notified that a test report has been submitted under your name, you can either accept or decline it. You may preview the test report first before accepting or declining it. To preview the test report, first click water data using the left navigation. Then click the test report ID of the report you want to preview. You will be directed to the page with all test results submitted on your behalf by the ZAC accepted laboratory. To preview the scorecard, first click water data using the left navigation. Then, under the action column of the water data list table, click preview scorecard. Here, you can preview your facility test result details and performance summary. After reviewing the results, you can proceed to accepting or declining the wastewater test report. First, click water data using the left navigation. Then, under the action column of the water data list table, click check to accept or click the X to decline. Once you have accepted a test report, the scorecard button will be displayed under the action column. To view your scorecard, first go to the water data page. To preview your scorecard from a published test report, click view scorecard under the action column of the water data entry. This page will display the facility test result details and performance summary. You can also download your scorecard as a PDF file. Now we will show you how to add a permit. First, go to Permits. Then click Add Permit at the upper right section of the Permit List page. At the Permit Details page, fill out the required information and upload a digital copy of your permit by clicking Choose a file or dragging the file onto a designated area. File formats that are currently supported are PNG, JPEG, TIF, TIFF, and PDFs. Finally, click Save to proceed or cancel if you do not wish to proceed. So we are happy also to announce that the new functionality for suppliers has been released. So in addition to what you just um, saw, that was just demonstrated on the permits uh, upload, uh, there's a new functionality that allows you, the supplier, upload a permit through two ways. One of them was already demonstrated, it was a simple PDF upload. And the newly uh, um, released functionality is listing chemicals and their limits as reflected on a permit. And let's see now how it works. Hi, this training will walk you through how to use, utilize uploading permits into the ZDHC gateway. Currently, there's two methods to upload permits into the ZDHC gateway. One, simple PDF upload. Two, listing specific chemicals and their limits as they are reflected on your permit. First, let's go into the upload process by a simple PDF. I will show you how to add a permit. You click here, input all details associated with the permit, set an issue date, and upload or drag and drop the PDF file that you have for this permit here. Let me show an example of one that's already completed. Here, you can see the RM suppliers has uploaded all the details included, as well as a PDF document. This can be viewable by you at any moment. Next, I would like to show you how to use an SEL permit. The purpose of the substance control list permit is to allow suppliers to list specifically chemicals and parameters and limits associated with them. These can later be used to compare against your water data. Let us first review how to add a control list. Similar to the other permit upload mechanism, this too asks for name, version, active dates, description, and a PDF file upload. However, in addition to those, fields such as authority, application areas, 
and analytical substrates are all requested. Now, I will show an example of how the rest of the substance control list can be added. I will fill in the details below. Here, you can see that I'm given categories, chemicals, and parameters to define. The categories are simply groupings of chemicals or parameter substances that you would like to input. For example, I will add conventional parameter as a category. We'll also add a secondary, which is MRSL parameters. I will indicate that these are the, of the type parameters and chemicals. You're also able to add a description and if there are child tables of these categories you're able to define that too. Next I will move on to the chemicals. Here, since I've already defined my categories, I can list which categories and choose from a list of chemicals. And also add the indicator for this particular chemical. Perhaps in my permit, there is a maximum value listed, which I will add here, of 10 parts per million. When I'm done, I will click Save and continue editing. This will allow me to move down the list of chemicals in my permit. Similar to chemicals, I can move into parameters. Just like before, I will select the category. Earlier, I added conventional parameters. I will add the name of a specific parameter and the indicator. Perhaps for color, the indicator is 200. There. Now, I'm able to save my parameters. Just like this, I can go down the list adding parameters associated with this permit, listing what the values are, maximums, or perhaps between values or minimums. Now, I will move on to showing you an already completed permit. Here, you can see the water city permit. Here, I can go ahead and change any details associated with this, or I can view and edit. So under other features, you're able to use this table to track down values for easier completion. Next, let us use these permits and compare them to your water data. When you navigate to the water data tab, Go to the screen functionality. Here, you're able to select from numerous water data associated with your account, as well as all permits that are substance control lists that you uploaded. Today, I will use the wastewater city permit and compare it to incoming and treated, treated water added along three different test reports. Here, once the compare results are in, for matching analytes, you can see that a value will be provided, whether it's in range, and what the result was. And for those that don't match, dashes will indicate that. 
Here you can see incoming water and treated water in two different separate tabs. If I were to select additional parameters here, sampling locations, and I compare again, you can see that you can see that the additional sampling location is visible too. And last but not least, let's see what the brand can do on the ZDHC wastewater module. So we saw already what is the functionality of a laboratory, a supplier, some new releases for the suppliers, and now it's time for the brands. So let's see uh, what a brand can do uh, by having access on the wastewater module. So if you are a brand, please pay attention to the next demonstration. Today, we will show you how to add a new user under your organization's profile, how to preview suppliers wastewater test reports, as well as how to invite your suppliers to register in the ZEC Gateway wastewater module. First, how to add a new user. As a brand account administrator, you can create one or multiple new users for your account. To add a new user, use the left-hand navigation menu and click Users. Then, click Add a user. Fill out all required fields, which are fields marked with an asterisk. Then, navigate to the link in your account to user section. Type or double-click the company name field. Either start typing the name of the company desired or select from the drop-down. Once the company is selected, the ZHC account ID and account type fields will automatically be populated. Select the user role for the new user. The new user can either be an account admin with full visibility and power or a viewer with restricted powers. When you're done, click Save. ZHC Gateway will automatically email the new user with instructions for setting a password. If you would like to modify your user account information, the edit feature in the ZHC Gateway allows you to do so. You can modify username, job title, passwords, and description, as well as contact details. To edit the user information, go to the User tab on your homepage. Click the Edit User under the Actions column for a specific user. You will then be redirected to the User's Details page. Fill out or edit fields in the User Profile section. The required fields are denoted with an asterisk. In this page, you can also reset your password. Click Save to complete the update. Your changes are now saved. Now we're going to show you how to preview published wastewater data in the ZEC Gateway wastewater module. First, click Water Data using the left navigation. You will be directed to the list of all wastewater data published by the suppliers. The list includes also the name of the laboratory submitted the data on behalf of a supplier, as well as the name of the supplier. You can easily download the PDF file of the wastewater test report by clicking on the icon in column attachment. Or you can review the data online by clicking the preview scorecard icon in the action column. This page will display the facility details and a detailed performance summary. By clicking on download, you can download all test results or a selection in Excel format to do a data analysis. Now we're going to show you how to search for suppliers. As a brand in the ZEC Gateway Wastewater module, you can make use of the enhanced functionality to search for other organizations in the system. On the home page, click Browse by Organization Type. A selection of all types of system users will appear on the bottom of your screen. To search for suppliers, Click on the respective button. You will be redirected to a search page with all supplier accounts in the ZEC Gateway. The ZEC Gateway gives you the opportunity to bookmark the suppliers you would like to follow secretly to have access to their profiles. To do so, click on the Add Bookmark icon on the top right of each supplier's preview icon. The supplier is now bookmarked and you can visit their profile quickly through bookmarks on the left navigation. And what if you cannot find a supplier on the list of organizations? Then you can invite them. The ZEC Gateway allows you, the brand, to invite suppliers to join the ZEC Gateway in two ways, manually, one-by-one -one invitation, or inviting in bulk. 
To invite suppliers manually, click Invites using the left navigation. Once you are on the Invite List page, click the cross button on the upper right corner of the page and a pop-up window will appear. Fill out all necessary information needed. All required fields are marked with an asterisk. Click Invite to send the invite. Once the invitation is sent, an email with the registration link will be sent to the invited organization. To invite suppliers in bulk, click the Bulk Invite button on the upper right corner. Download the bulk invite template in Excel format and fill in all requested fields. You can even attach a file when sending an invitation to a supplier. The next step for you is to upload this Excel file and attachments. You have two options in uploading your data. You may choose a file from your computer or you may drag and drop a file into the designated area. Simply click on Invite to send the invitations. Once the invitation is sent, an email with the registration link will be sent to the invited organization. And that was the end of the demonstrations. We hope that were clear, understandable, and insightful for all type of users attending the webinar today. And if not, of course, you're welcome to ask us your questions by clicking on the Q&A button. And let's now proceed with the user access rights and data flow on the wastewater module. In June 2018, we updated the user terms and conditions for the ZDHC Gateway users. If you are a current user, you received already an email notification about this update in late June. If you haven't reviewed the current user terms and conditions, you are kindly requested to log in, review, and accept it. Please note that you cannot access the gateway if the user terms and conditions have not been accepted. The updated user terms and conditions are applied across personal, organizational, as well as operational information registered on the platform. As personal information can be considered names, addresses, phone numbers of users, and for their managing, the provisions of the latest EU General Data Protection Regulation, known as GDPR, are taken into account. Places of businesses, addresses, and general contact details can be considered as organizational information. And lastly, operational information include but are not limited to wastewater test reports, product certifications, and other sustainability information which are required or requested to be uploaded on the gateway. For this category of information, the user terms and conditions host an extended section related to data disclosure divided into subsections with clauses on ownership, accuracy, and sharing of data. And since we all understand that data disclosure is a fundamental part and process of the gateway, we want to make sure that all the process steps are transparent and clarifications are provided through an analytical data flow chart. This chart can be found on Annex 3 of the User Terms and Conditions document, and we will be sharing it with you latest today, later today. And now let's proceed with describing the access rights of all user categories involved with the wastewater module. Firstly, we will do it individually and in the end as a holistic data flow chart. Please note that all this information are included on the updated user terms and conditions. Let's start with the laboratories. As a first step, the ZDHC Accepted Lab submits a wastewater test report on behalf of an active supplier and within 20 working days of the test testing completion. A supplier is marked as active when the annual reporting fee of 190 euro has been paid on their behalf indirectly by a ZDHC Accepted Lab. By paying this fee on the behalf of the supplier, the lab can submit an unlimited number of data for one year. Please be aware that the lab can only see their submissions and not test reports submitted by other labs. Please, as a lab, do not forget to submit your data to suppliers by clicking the correct button. We have noticed that some laboratories forget to click on submit. In this case, the supplier cannot review the data. And now let's proceed to suppliers access. The supplier is getting notified that a test report has been submitted on their behalf by a lab, and thus they are required to review this data online. 
Next step for them, accept or decline the data. They are required to do so within 20 business days. And if no action is taken within these 20 business days, the data will be fully disclosed internally and in an anonymized format on the public disclosure portal. We will talk in details about the public disclosure portal in a few seconds. After reviewing the submitted data, the supplier either accepts or declines the data. If accepted, the data is published on the ZDHC Gateway Wastewater Module. Only the ZDHC brands can access this data and in the public disclosure portal on an anonymized format. If the data now is declined, then it is not published on the wastewater module and thus is not accessible by the DHC brands. The brands can only see the declined status of the report and logically, there is no disclosure to the public disclosure portal. The laboratory gets notified online that the supplier declined the data and they need both to resolve the issue together. The updated data shall be resubmitted. Please note that the supplier is mandatorily required to provide the reason why they declined the data. And note that the supplier can see only their test reports, not other suppliers' reports. And let's now dive deeper into the public disclosure portal. In July 1st, 2018, we published the public disclosure portal, an online tool that helps the industry in particular brands and facilities, to identify gaps and drive performance in meeting the requirements of the ZDHC wastewater guidelines. The wastewater test results disclosed in the public disclosure portal are aggregated, color-coded data per facility, divided into two categories, verified data and unverified data. Verified data are wastewater testing data that are directly uploaded by ZDHC accepted laboratories under the ZDHC wastewater and sludge testing program upon the completion of the wastewater testing. And unverified data are wastewater data that are provided by third parties such as IPE. This wastewater testing may be conducted by any laboratories which ZDHC has not necessarily reviewed their testing capability and their quality assurance program. And a bit more information about the color coding. Green indicates that all tested analytes per report meet the ZDHC wastewater guidelines requirements. Red indicates that at least one tested analyte does not meet the requirements. And yellow confirms that at least one tested analyte does not meet the requirements and that a corrective action plan has been submitted. In the public disclosure portal, the name of the facility is not disclosed and their exact location is limited to a regional level. And next, let's see the brand's access rights. Brands can access the test data submitted by labs and accepted by the suppliers, and can only see the report status when it is either declined or under a pending vote. And last but not least, on your screens now the full water data flowchart as a holistic picture of the access rights described today. This schema can be found in the latest version of the user terms and conditions as updated in June 2018. For those of you that haven't yet reviewed the user terms and conditions, please log into your Gateway account and review. I would like to note here a very important option for suppliers that have published reports on the ZDHC Gateway and consequently to the public disclosure portal on an anonymized format. Please note that you can now unpublish at any time the report by sending an email request to gateway at zdnc.org, as you can see on your screens. Do not forget, though, to mention the report ID number when requesting at publishing. Also, please note that unpublished test reports will appear on ZDNC Gateway with a declined status. And heading towards the end of this webinar, I would like to remind you that the demonstrations covered today will be soon after the webinar end available on the ZDHC Academy. Some demonstrations are already there, so enroll yourself first to the Gateway section and then access the material. And one of these screenshots you can see at the moment on your screens. 
Also, don't forget to check the Gateway webinar schedule in English and Chinese through our website. You can find the link to our website on the top right screen of your screen. You need to, to click on the event tab, as you can see on the screenshot, and select webinars. It's a very easy process. You can register throughout this um, tab of the ZDLC um, uh, official website. 